Finally guys, we got the lift kit installed on the Eco Diesel Wrangler. We only gained one inch of lift in the front over stock, which it's a three and a half inch lift kit. So we should have gotten more if it was a diesel lift. We did get three inches of lift in the back, but only one inch in the front. Now, the front of these obviously is gonna be heavier with the large diesel motor. These JLs weigh more than a gas model. I'm guessing a good chunk of that is up front with the diesel engine. And so with the three and a half inch springs for a gas engine, well, we only ended up with one inch of lift. So temporarily, I'm probably gonna put a one and a half inch spacer in to level it out. Now it does kind of look level. It's a bit of an optical illusion because the Rubicon's fenders are quite a bit higher. But if you look at the actual body lines of the windows, uh, it is raked fair, a fair bit to the front. So with spacers, I will level that out for a while until I receive some uh, heavier springs or different coil rate for the front and probably the back because I wouldn't mind getting a little bit more lift overall. So we will replace all four springs eventually. I knew that going in, no fault to Terraflex whatsoever. Probably the first customer lifted Jeep with an eco diesel motor from Terraflex. So some learning and uh, that's okay. We're all good. I'm not obviously not upset at all um, because I ordered this and I knew it was for gas model. I ordered this kit way back in February because I wanted to have it to have the Jeep ready for a bunch of road trips. And well, with everything going on, no road trips. So I've taken my time having it installed, but I still have the gas model kit and I'm working with Terraflex to kind of see the differences along with their engineers and explaining my challenges that we had. And we will be changing some, some things out at some point. I had the Terraflex three and a half inch lift uh, Alpine RT3, I'll put it down in the description below, but the three and a half inch Terraflex lift with replacing all eight control arms, front track bar, Falcon 2.1 shocks because we couldn't fit the 3.3 bypass shocks on the Eco Diesel, but we did put the 3.3 adjustable rear shocks on. I added rock hard lower control arm skid plates as well as a steer smart tie rod. And I do have a drag link, but I bought the wrong one. So that one's got to go back on. Uh, or go on soon when I get the replacement here shortly. We're gonna try to get this back on the dyno real soon with the 37. So that might be one of the next upcoming videos. So if you wanna see that or any of my other mods that I am gonna be doing, cause we're not done yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Up front, we have the Falcon Monotube 2.1 shocks. Originally I had ordered the 3.3 shocks, which have a fixed bypass that you cut a hole in the fender liner to pass through to, uh, or make room for, not pass through, but make room for. On these, on the Eco Diesels, there's a battery tray right here and there's no clearance for that bypass tube. So we had to temporarily put the 2.1 mono tubes on the front, but on the back, we have the adjustable 3.3 Falcon shocks and you can adjust them from firm or soft or custom, and there's a micro dial right here on the top that you can set to a custom setting uh, of your preference. So there's three positions for this, firm, soft, and custom. So we'll leave it on the three for now, but we do have the bypass shocks in the back. I can't wait to get them up front on the Jeep. So Mike, my friend who was installing this for me, found out when we went to go and add the speed bumps. So I added the Terraflex, uh, well, with the kit, we got the Terraflex speed bumps, which um, are not just a rubber bushing, a rubber mounted uh, bump stop. They have a compressible uh, piston or whatever shock within them to try to level out hard hits that uh, your springs would normally bottom out on. And we found that the jounce tubes, which is the tube that your bump stop would normally mount to, are longer on the Eco Diesel. So they came, the actual bottom of the bump stop came down further than on a gas model because we had to cut, we had to cut the jounce tube and we ended up having to cut an extra inch and a half of it to make these speed bumps fit. Now we shimmed it as normal for a Rubicon 
with two and a half inches of shims on the bottom, but we had to count, cut more of this jounce tube off. And my guess, or Mike's guess, or our combined guess, is that quite possibly from the factory, the control arms might interfere or hit a cooling line or possibly the bottom of the oil pan or even maybe the top of the diff might hit the oil pan if it had that extra inch and a half of up travel that you would have on a gas model. So the diesels are taller. They're any, I haven't confirmed exactly. Some people have said half an inch. Some people have said an inch and a half. I've talked to several people and don't have a specific exact number, but they are taller, which means they sit higher, but they probably have less up travel overall so something interesting uh, to note about that is that the jounce tubes were different so the other thing is that with losing two and a half or two inches of our lift due to these uh lighter springs or whatever whatever you want to call them just not as stiff or tall springs is that the bump stop the bottom of the bump stop is very close to the shim on the axle there's only maybe an inch and a half of upward travel before we start to come into contact with the speed bump. Now the speed bump will travel another inch and a half upwards before it bottoms out. But what we're finding is that going over speed bumps and things like that is that the shim on the bottom is, you can hear it hitting the bottom of the speed bump. And so with an extra two or two and a half inches or so, that would be much less likely to occur and only large bumps would bottom out these springs. But because these springs are not made for such a heavy front end, we're effectively bottoming them out and starting to use that speed bump, uh, bump stop earlier than we should be. So that is something else with having the wrong springs or having gas springs in that even putting a spacer on top of the perch will only uh, make a small difference with that, I think. So we need to get some proper springs in here, but in the meantime, this is gonna be fine. The other thing that I made a mistake was with the drag link. So the drag link is your connection from your, your uh, pitman arm, your sector shaft and your steering box. The drag link comes down to your steering knuckle. I ordered a top mount drag link. I wasn't really thinking, I was just thinking about JKs and that's pretty common. But on the JLs, unless you have a large lift, like four and a half inches or higher, you wanna have a bottom mount drag link. Otherwise, you're going to have to get a track bar relocation bracket to drop your track bar down on the frame side in order to keep your drag link and your track bar parallel. And you want those parallel, otherwise you'll have weird bump steer and just unpredictable handling characteristics. You always wanna have your drag link and your track link track bar uh, parallel to each other, and that will give you the best handling. So I do wanna replace the drag link with something beefier and more heavy duty. These end links are uh, notorious or common for wearing out with off-road abuse, um, just general off-roading. So before that happens, I'm gonna just replace it and upgrade it to match the tie rod, which I got the Steer Smarts Yeti XD tie rod, which goes across from steering knuckle to steering knuckle. And this is a lot stronger and stiffer and if this impacts something like a rock or a tree stump, it's going to be much less likely to damage either the joints, the ends, or the bar itself. So the other thing with the suspension being too low in the front is you can see that the sway bar is really high, uh, on a high angle. The sway bar should be closer to parallel or flat when it's sitting at ride height or resting. And the Terraflex end links are quite long, which I think they're about the appropriate length. But if we added another two inches, this sway bar would then dip down and be much closer to parallel or just above parallel, which is a good spot to be. So just a whole bunch of stuff not working or looking proper because we're too low or lower than we're supposed to be. So. So I will get uh, I will get this lifted up as I said with some spacers, but I uh, will I do want to get the proper rate coil springs in there as soon as possible. So I did add to the bottoms of the lower control arms on the front and the back the skid plates from Rock Hard, and that will protect the lower control arm mounting brackets on the front and right here on the back and that will protect this right this bracket 
quite well. This is a very heavy duty quarter inch steel plate and this is where the control arm mounts. And if we look at it from the back right here, this is also going to really protect the shock mount. The shock mount hangs quite low and is very susceptible to being damaged by rocks or, or anything you're off-roading over. And so that will really help with that. I really wanted to have those added on before I destroyed the shock and control arm mounts. And then the other thing we added is this track bar bracket and sector shaft uh, reinforcement or whatever you want to call it. This is made by Synergy. It's going to help protect the sector shaft from any you know, movement or being damaged uh, if you're putting a lot of pressure on it, trying to turn over an obstacle. But it also reduces uh, the flex that occurs with the factory uh, mount point for the track bar because it's just not beefy enough. And I've, actually last year at Jeep Jamboree in Oregon, we saw someone shear their track bar bracket right off their factory track bar. So this will reinforce that and help protect our steering and as well our track bar. And it firms up the, uh, it actually firms up your steering wheel a bit and removes some of the play that occurs um, when you're driving. As well, we added on a new drive shaft from Adams and we did that to gain some additional clearance because it is a narrower drive shaft than the factory drive shaft. It is also stronger and going to be less likely to be damaged by, you know, an obstacle or driving hard. I didn't replace the rear at this time. I haven't replaced my rear on my JK either. This is, uh, while it is larger and more susceptible to damage, uh, it doesn't have the same clearance issues that you have with the front one. So I did want to replace this while we were doing everything. Other thing was that we can't, that we came across is right here is the rear sway bar where it connects to the frame. And the Terraflex kit includes a shim. The shim goes between the sway bar bracket and the frame. And this is to change the rotation point of the sway bar because otherwise the sway bar hits the front of the shock. Now the problem with this on the diesels is that we have this the DEF tank here. This is the diesel exhaust fluid. And when Mike tried to put that in, it was interfering with the DEF tank. So he actually took the strap off that holds the DEF tank, remade a new bracket that pushes the DEF tank back maybe half an inch and gave just enough clearance for this shim and bracket for the rear sway bar. Uh, so that was something that, uh, yeah, that was just unexpected and a little workaround. And I'm sure any diesel lift kits will accommodate that. But if you're looking at buying a lift kit and looking at a gas one, these are some of the things you're gonna run into. Let's take it for a drive and I'll share my thoughts of how it uh, drives and handles and uh, at least on the road. I can't really get out off-roading today, but uh, I'll, I'll share some of my initial thoughts with you. And uh, yeah, let's hop in. As far as highway goes, pretty smooth. Uh, it doesn't wander at all. And now I didn't, I don't have the steering stabilizer in here. So I uh, wasn't sure exactly how that would go. And I thought I would add it later if necessary, but uh, tracks pretty good. No wandering on the highway. If you want to know how to have your rear view camera come on with your turn signal, check out my previous video. Um, I will put a link in the corner, corner, one of these corners, on uh, just how to do that with the Taser JL. All right, so I thought I would take the Jeep up this twistier section uphill. Uh, very steep grade, but lots of corners. I wanted to see how the body roll is. So just coming up this hill with I guess you call it twisties. Gives me kind of a good opportunity to see how the suspension handles corners uh, and at a well, regular driving speed. And uh, it, it feels pretty good. Not a lot of body roll. I would say that it's a little softer or smoother than factory. The factory I find is a little bit firm. The steering feels tight with this, well, with this 
sort of steering upgrades. We've still got to put the drag link in, but I do think that that synergy track bar bracket and sector shaft brace does make a difference in firming up the steering. I'm pretty happy with how it is with no steering stabilizer. I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out, but to me, it feels pretty good. So the suspension does feel a little bit bouncy. I'm wondering if that might be because we don't have the right tuned springs in there. They are a little bit overloaded, especially in the front. And so I think I might be getting a little bit more bounce than I should be. And I think to really test the suspension any further, we're going to have to take it off-roading.